evening and warm welcome to you all for the Total Smart Talk series lecture 8 Design of Rigid Pavements for Low Volume Roads by Dr. M. Salvam, postdoctoral researcher, Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Madras. Mm -hmm. This is the eighth session organized by Turtle Smart Talk series as part of our initiatives to provide a knowledge sharing platform among engineers and academicians through eminent inter interactions, technocrats from academics and also industry. We cordially welcome all enthusiasts to the session in the series organized in connotation with Association of Engineers, Kerala, Thiruvanthapuram District Center, Indian Concrete Institute, Thiruvanthapuram District Center, and High Tech Total Solution Providers about a relevant topic by an eminent academician who is also an industry expert in the sector. Now, I request Mr. Jitin Korean Andrews, consultant, Total Smart Solutions LLP and Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, St. Gitts College of Engineering to formally introduce and invite our guest speaker. Good evening all. Today we have with us Dr. Selvam for delivering the session on the design of low volume roads. Dr. Selvam is a current postdoctoral researcher and former PMRF research scholar from the Department of Civil Engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. His research work on roller compacted concrete payments has earned a prestigious position in the list of top 10 commendable research works conducted in civil, earth science, architecture, ocean, and naval engineering by the Indian Ministry of Education in 2022. His research interests include special components and the valorization of recycled aggregates for sustainable concrete payments. Prior to joining IIT Madras, Dr. Selvam worked as an ad hoc faculty at the National Institute of Technology, Trichy, for one year. He received his Master of Engineering degree in Transportation Engineering from the College of Engineering, Giddi, Anna University, where his dissertation topic was the evaluation of strength and permeability of pervious concrete payment. He is an active member of several professional organizations, including RILEM, Indian Dot Congress, Indian Concrete Institute, American Concrete Institute, American Society of Civil Engineers, and Australian Society for Concrete Payments. It is our pleasure to have you have with us, Dr. Selvam. On behalf of all the participants, I invite Dr. Selvam for this session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your invite. I am happy to provide your lecture on design of low volume roads. So today, uh, in this presentation, I will go through the presentation to the following outline. Initially, I will introduce you all to the rural roads, followed by uh, factors governing the design, such as traffic, subgrade, and concrete properties. And it will be followed by uh, rural road design it manually, as well as with the Excel sheet. And this presentation ends with a case study, wherein we will compare this conventional concrete pavement and the roller compacted concrete pavement. As everyone knows that these rural roads are subjected to different vehicles. In the slide, you can see that it has been subjected to bullock cart and it's followed by a truck which is carrying a sugarcane after the end of monsoon. On the right side, you can see that different vehicles are used for transporting goods as well as humans. It should be noted that uh, this rural road has gained momentum after this Pradhan Mandri Gram Sadak Yojana in 2002. And this scheme is provided uh, that to provide uh, rural road connectivity for uh, habitation with more than 1,000 people. So according to uh, basic road statistics of India, it can be noted that uh, national highway and state highway will account only for less than 4 percentage. But when you look at this rural road, it is around 70 percentage. With this uh, introduction to the importance of rural road, we will discuss about uh, rural road design and fundamental. Generally, rural roads are provided to connect these uh, nearby rural areas. It mainly consists of low traffic volume, uh, that is, number of commercial vehicles per day is less than uh, 450. And when you see the vehicle composition, there are different kind of vehicles, starting from agriculture tractor, light wood vehicle, animal drawn vehicle, and operations. So the most common composition of rural road is uh, like construction of subgrade above which there will be a granular layer and the top surface can be either bituminous pavement or concrete pavement. In, con uh, in, uh, 
the concrete pavements have been constructed on many rural area under this PMGSO scheme. If we have this poor drainage condition and the soil strength is very poor and aggregates are costly to transport it from the other location, the better choice is to go uh, towards this concrete pavement, which often an alternative to the flexible pavement. Now let us discuss about what is the scope of IRCSP 62. So when you want to design a pavement which is having less than uh, a number of commercial vehicles is less than 450, then we can choose this IRCSP 62. But if the number of commercial vehicle is more than 450, then we have to choose this IRCSP 58. That is a rigid pavement design, uh, such as a uh, pavement quality concrete. And in this uh, IRCSP 62, it will discuss about the design principle for rigid pavement of uh, low volume road, which has a minimum width of 3.75 meter. And in case of hilly area, the minimum width is around 3 meter. Uh, this this uh, design principle can be applied to design a roller compacted concrete and conventional concrete application. The transition provided in rural road is uh, in the range of 2.5 meter to 4 meter. When you compare with this conventional concrete pavement, which is very less because here we want to reduce this number of uh, here we want to reduce this paddling stress. Hence, we are restricting this uh, joints between 2.5 to 4 meter, which is against this 4.75 meter in uh, conventional concrete. For rural road, there is no need of double bar, uh, except for the construction and expansion joints. Now, let us discuss about what are the factors which govern this uh, design. The first and foremost important parameter is the wheel load. When you want to design a pavement, uh, pavement, we have to know what type of load will occur, what is the maximum load. According to ISSP 68, the maximum legal limit load on single axle with a dual wheel load is 100 kN and the recommended design load on dual load is 15 kN. If you see, uh, mostly in the rural area, aggregated tractors and trailers are used for uh, carrying the construction materials. And in rare case, it is approaching to this 50 kilometer. So we are designing for this uh, critical state. The second most important parameter is the tire pressure. So usually we design this uh, pavement with a tire pressure of 0.8. That is only for a truck carrying the dual wheel. But in case uh, if the material is carried by using a tractor trial, then the pressure will be reduced, which is 0.5 meha Pascal. However, when you do this sensitive analysis by changing the tire pressure, you can found that the influence of tire pressure on the pavement thickness is very low. So it doesn't matter whether you are using 0.8 meha Pascal or 0.5 meha Pascal as a tire pressure. And uh, another important parameter is the design period. Usually the rural road is designed for a period of 20 years or higher than ours. It is assumed that the rate of traffic will be a wide percentage over the period of design. Yeah. I request the participants to keep muted. Mr. Kashif Nine, please keep muted. Thank you. So this rate of growth is again lesser when compared to this rigid pavement design that is frequency. There we'll assume about 7.5 percentage. We are assuming that in rural road the traffic growth is very less. So that's why we are going with 5 percentage incremental rate. Now coming to the design uh, principle. We already know that uh, rural road, uh, we can go with ISSP 62 only if the number of commercial vehicles is less than 450. But again, if you are using a single day length for designing the traffic from 0 to 450, that is uneconomic. In some cases, you might have 50 commercial vehicles per day. In some cases, it may be more than 300, 350, 400 also. In such case, uh, we have to design this, we have to design according to the number of commercial vehicles. Hence, IRC came up with the three different uh, designing criteria. The first one is the uh, design for number of commercial vehicle less than 50. If the commercial vehicle is less than 50, we have to design only based on uh, wheel load stresses. The reason is that uh, the chances of occurring simultaneous occurrence of uh, wheel load and the higher temperature difference is very rare. So hence we are ignoring this uh, temperature stress. But if the wheel load, uh, the number of commercial vehicle is between the 50 to 150, we have to consider both uh, stresses due to this wheel load and temperature difference. If the commercial vehicle is greater than 150, then we have to design based on the fatigue analysis, which is uh, primarily derived from this IRC 58, but where uh, we are designing this pavement for 90 percentage, but in rural road, 
they are designing only for 60 percentage availability the term reliability indicates that uh, the probability that the pavement and uh, the design pavement intended to perform well during the design period. That means 60% uh, it can perform well. Hence, we are providing 40% of uh, allowable card during this design period. Now, uh, let us move on to this material properties uh, that is this upgrade property. So, uh, as you all know, that uh, subgrade is the foundation for the overlaying structures. Hence, it is necessary to understand this uh, material properties of subgrade. The strength of subgrade can be determined by using the modulus of subgrade reaction, which is determined by using the plate load test. If you see this testing procedure and assembly, it is very expensive, time consuming, and difficult to transfer from location to location. Hence, uh, we have an alternative uh, methodology to determine the subgrade reactions. The one way is by using the CPR, that is a sober CPR value that can determine the laboratory. The other way is by using the dynamic cone penetration value. So with this, we have a correlation between the CPR and the cone penetration value. And from this, we can uh, convert the CPR value to a value which is given in the table. So this table has been provided in the IRC. Where you can see that uh, K value for C per ranging from 2 to 100 percentage has been provided. Now let us move on this move on to the subbase properties. Uh, here also we have we have to provide this subbase for three different uh, traffic scenarios. The main purpose of subbase is to provide a good drainage. So if the number of commercial vehicles is less than 50, we can use this 100 mm GSP and uh, sound is thick WBM or WM. Some cases we can't find the good quality aggregate nearby locations, hence we can go with this uh, heated aggregates or soil layer. Uh, for example, we can go for 150 mm heated cement line or line flyers treated aggregates or soil layer. But if you use this kind of treatment, should be ensured that uh, for cement treated uh, mixes, the unconfined composition at three days should be at least greater than three maha pascal, whereas it should be uh, three maha pascal at 20 days for lime and lime, lime, fl lime plus flyers treated mixes. For commercial vehicle between the 50 to 150, uh, we can use a similar kind of approach, but there is one slight uh, adjustment here. So you can use this 100 mm cementitious uh, granular subbase over uh, 100 mm thick cementitious available material. The same uh, process can be followed here. However, we have to increase this uh, thickness of WBM and WMM to 150 mm, and the same 100 mm GSP can be provided here also. The minimum slab thickness for uh, rural road is 50 mm. We have to make sure that we are, we are providing always uh, providing a thickness of slab higher than the 150 mm. Once you know this uh, combination of uh, different layers and the thickness, next you have to determine these properties of this subbase material. So after knowing the CPA value, we can able to determine this K, K value, that's smallest of subgrade reaction. But uh, however, if you see a pavement, it's a monolithic structure, hence we have to combine these properties of subgrade and subbase to a single value. That is called a effective K value. So if it is a GSP and the uh, thickness ranges between 150 to 50, we can get this uh, K value from here. And if it is a cementitious subbase, again, IS has given this uh, K value, which is usually multiplied by twice of uh, subgrade CBR. But in some cases, like uh, we are putting 75 mm WBM and 100 mm GSP, we don't have this value. In such case, we can take a 20 percentage higher CBR of subgrade CBR value. The K value for cementitious uh, layer, as discussed here, it, it is uh, always twice that of subgrade K value. However, at this moment, I want I would like to bring a fact that IRC 58 also given a similar kind of table. If you see this K value for subgrade and a similar uh, thickness of uh, GSP, the effective K value is coming around 108, which is double the times of uh, 56, which is given in the IRC SP62. So the reason for this uh, fact is not given anywhere. I just introduce here to ponder upon this fact. Coming to this uh, surface course, that is a concrete la layer, we usually go with the M30 grade for uh, rural roads. In some time, we can go for M35 also. The design for uh, 
rural road is based on the flexure strength. The flexure strength is based on uh, four point loading test for the pavement application. In some cases, we can't be able to determine this flexure strength. Hence, in such cases, we can just determine the compressor strength. And by using this empirical formula, that is a point sound root over the FCK, we can determine the flexure strength. And usually, this pavement design is based on 90 days flexure strength. But in the laboratory, we will measure up to 20 days. So, in such cases, we can assume that flexure strength at 90 days would be 10 percentage higher than the 20 days flexure strength. Again, for determining the modulus of elasticity, we can uh, use this empirical equation that is 5000 root over FCK. And other parameters like Poisson ratio, thermal expansion, can, as already given in the ERC, we can directly take this parameter. Discussing about the edge load stress, as you all know, that uh, the pavement is subjected to the repeated application of uh, V load, which is causes the stress. And another one uh, stress is caused by this temperature. To determine this edge load test, we usually follow this Westergaard edge formula. This uh, stress is a function of uh, thickness of the pavement and the radius of relative stiffness. The radius of relative stiffness is usually is, uh, depend on the modulus of subgrade reaction, elastic modulus, and Poisson ratio. This stress is also a function of uh, radius of tire printed, tire imprint, which is a uh, surface area contact. Which is usually determined by this formula. This is as uh, already given in the ISC for single wheel tire and dual wheel tire. By feeding this input parameter for this uh, equation, we can able to determine this edge stress. And coming on to the second uh, important uh, parameter that is the temperature stresses. This is usually determined based on the Broadberry formula. Let us take a typical case when you are uh, subjecting the pavement to the daytime. The temperature at the top will be higher than the bottom. Hence, uh, the pavement will try to buckle up due to the temperature difference. We always assume that the temperature difference will be linear across its depth. So, when the pavement is trying to buckle up, uh, then the self weight of this pavement will try to bring back to the original position. Hence, you can see that uh, there will be compressors will be developed at the top region and tensile stress at the bottom region. The reversal effect will happen during the night time. So this uh, very the stresses due to the temperature uh, is usually determined by using the broad very equation where you assume the linear temperature. However, when you take a real time scenario, for example, here is the picture which shows this variation in the temperature for a slab constructed in the factory. So what they did, they constructed a pavement and they inserted this thermocouple at a different depth of the pavement, like at one by fourth, and they note. They captured this uh, variation the temperature by using the thermocouple for both daytime and nighttime. Here you can see that uh, the temperature differential during the daytime is increasing from top to bottom. And the, here you have to find out these three different uh, points. The first one is this variation in the temperature. Here you can see that the temperature is has been increasing up to the depth in linear fashion. After that, it's following almost become constant. This is the first point, and second point would be uh, the difference in the temperature during the daytime and nighttime. Here you can see that the difference in the temperature is more, but when you see at the nighttime, the difference between the top and bottom layer is very less. So, hence, we are always assuming that the temperature difference at the nighttime will be half of the temperature differential at the day. The third most important parameter is the uh, variation in the temperature along the depth. You see this temperature at the top to middle region, it is more. But when you look at this below region, that is middle to bottom layer, the temperature differential is different. So hence, the slab will uh, try to buckle up in a different manner, like the top portion will be subjected to the different curvature. However, the bottom region will be tried to be in original position, so there will not be any stress. However, if you see this slab, it's a monolithic, hence they will try to curl up or down as a single unit. In such case, you can see uh, internal stress will develop, which will try to resist the curling. This causes this compressive state at the top and the bottom of the slab, and a tensile cell will be produced at the middle region. Again, there will be a vice versa case in the nighttime also. So here you can see that uh, tensile stress will be developed at the top and the bottom, and in the middle region, uh, compression will be developed. By summing this linear and bilinear temperature variation, 
we can determine this temperature stress in overall. So once you know this temperature differential uh, difference, we can determine this temperature stress. Again, we need an additional one parameter uh, that is called Bradbury coefficient. So this is a coefficient which is usually determined based on this slab dimension as well as a radius of relative stiffness. So by knowing this ratio of slab dimension and relative stiffness, we can able to determine this Bradbury coefficient. So by feeding this Bradbury coefficient, we can determine the temperature uh, stresses. And another one important parameter is the temperature differential. So as I mentioned here, there will be variation in the temperature, but since India is spread all over with a different uh, geographical area, the temperature difference will be different. Hence, IRC has divided this different state in uh, six different zones, and they are given this uh, variation in the temperature for different slab thickness. It ranges from 150 mm to 250. Coming on to this fatigue analysis, uh, this analysis we usually perform uh, when the fatigue, when the number of commercial vehicle is more than 150. So this fatigue damage is calculated based on the expected reputation to allowable reputation. The expected reputation is usually calculated by using the singing fund uh, factor. Here you can see that uh, it's uh, depend on this number of commercial vehicle per day and the rate of growth of traffic and number of descent period. So based on this parameter, we can forecast this number of uh, commercial vehicle will play on the load at the end of the descent period. And the second mo most important parameter is the allowable reputation. So this is determined based on the fatigue equation, which is given in the IRC 58. And we are just uh, using the same equation with, uh, different, with a slight modification in the reliability factor, that is 60 percentage. So this is a equation uh, which is derived from the IRC 58. So here you can see that NF is the allowable number of reputation, which is dependent on the stress ratio. And this stress ratio is calculated by using the combination of stresses developed due to the temperature and load, and by knowing the modulus of rupture. So by knowing this stress ratio, we can fit this value into this function, and we can determine this uh, allowable number of reputation at the end of the descent period. For safe payment, this fatigue damage should be always lesser than the one that uh, then we can assume that this payment will uh, perform its uh, function for the design period. Now let us design a payment uh, for a different traffic scenario. So here I assume that we are going to construct a payment uh, in rural road or UP, which has a diff three different traffic volume. First one is the uh, number of traffic uh, around 45 and 140 and 200 number of commercial vehicles. Okay. So here also we are assuming that agriculture tractor, light good vehicle, heavy trucks and buses in vehicle. The CBR value for this area is 4 percentage. So now we can start designing the payment for first case. So in the first case, the design traffic is 45 uh, commercial vehicle per day. And we can assume this uh, subways uh, as a 100 mm GSP and 75 mm thick WBM or WM. So once you know the CBR value of subgrade, we can convert into this uh, modulus of subgrade reaction. So for 4 percent CBR, the modulus of subgrade reaction is 35. The next important uh, step is we have to determine this effective CBR value for uh, both subgrade and GSP and WM. So as suggested in this IRC, uh, since for uh, this combination of 75 mm WBM and 100 mm GSB, we can determine this effective uh, K value by just multiplying 25%, 20 percentage of subgrade K value. So when you multiply this 35 with 1.25, 1.2, we can uh, get this effective K value, which is 42 and a half speak per meter. So till now we discussed about CBR uh, parameter and uh, subgrade and subbase layers now we can move on to the surface layer so here we are assuming that we are going to use a 30 uh, m30 grade of concrete and the fluctuation strength of m30 at 90 days is 4.23 and the thickness of uh, surface layer we can assume as a 150 again it's uh, assumption if it's not performing again we have to change this i am assuming that we are providing a 3.7 meter uh, joint spacing for this paper 
as we discussed here we are first we have determined the edge load stress since the number of commercial vehicle is 40 we don't have design for temperature here we have to call it only for edge load stress so we already know that uh, 15 uh, kN will be there will be the design wheel load and modulus of subgrade reaction uh, plastic modulus of concrete is 30000 and tire pressure is 0 0.8 and the spacing between the dual wheels is uh, 310 mm by feeding this rally, you got to know that uh, stresses due to the uh, load is 4.33, which is higher than the model of structure, which indicates that the provided thickness is not sufficient. So till now, we designed this pavement manually. Now I will teach you how to do it uh, through the Excel sheet. So this is the Excel sheet, which is provided by the IRC along with the code book. So here we can uh, divide this into two ways. Uh, this portion is for uh, only input parameter and this region is for uh, obtaining this output parameter. So when, for the case one, since we already know that uh, the, number of, the number of commercial vehicle per day is 40, so we have to give this input uh, case as a 1 and you know that UP is lying in the temperature zone of 1, the modulus of subgrade reaction is 42 and once you give this uh, temperature zone, it will automatically uh, determine this uh, temperature differential. And here we have to feed this uh, modulus of rupture. The input parameter uh, for this area has been highlighted in the yellow color. And again, we have to give what type of uh, tire uh, we are designing, like single wheel or dual wheel. So hence, we are going to give it to, we are designing for dual wheel. And this is the most... Uh, important parameter with this we are going to optimize our design so initially i am assuming as a 0.15 as a trial thickness and i am feeding this number of commercial vehicle as a 40 so the joint spacing for this pavement is 3.75 so previously by manually designing we found that uh, the v load stress is 4.33 uh, we here also we can see that when, when i am giving this 0.15 as an input so the v load stress is uh, 4.33 which is higher than this modulus of rupture. So what we can do, we can increase this thickness of pavement to 0.16 and check we can whether we can uh, check that this layer is sufficient enough to overcome the stress develop. So here the stress develop is 3.9 uh, half Pascal, which is uh, lower than this 4.23, that is a modulus of uh, rupture. So by altering this trial thickness, we can uh, come up with this safe thickness for the pavement. So for case one, the tile thickness, uh, the safe thickness for the pavement is 0.16 meter. So alternately, we can determine this uh, safe uh, combination of different layer by changing this modulus of subgrade reaction, or you can change this modulus of uh, rupture of concrete, or you can change the joint spacing also. In the present case, I just changed only the tile thickness of uh, surface layer. Now we can move on to the second case where the pavement is subjected to 140 uh, commercial vehicle per day. So here also I am assuming that uh, same uh, the trial thickness can be a 160 mm. So when you use the 160 mm, the same edge, edge load stress will be there. So the edge load stress is coming around 3.93. But in addition to the edge load stress, uh, in this case we have to determine this curling stress. So for the UP region, it is coming in the, in the zone one. So here from the table, we can determine that uh, for 150, there is some uh, maximum temperature difference is given and for 200 also. But in our case, it's 160, which is lying in between the 150 to 200. In such scenario, we have to interpolate this value. So by doing the interpolation, we got the temperature differential of uh, 12.6 uh, degrees Celsius. The other important parameter is the Broadberry coefficient, uh, such as uh, C value. We already know this uh, breadth of the slab is 3.75, and uh, relative softness we already do determine with this modulus of subgrade reaction and elastic modulus of concrete and Poisson ratio. It is coming around 0 0.706 meter. By dividing this length of the slab and uh, relative softness, we got this ratio. By uh, interpolating this value, we got to know this uh, value of Broadberry coefficient is coming around 0.825. By feeding this value to this, uh, in this equation, we got this edge 
uh, temperature stress is coming around 0.72. Since uh, the number of combustion vehicle is more than 50, we have to combine these stresses due to temperature and stresses due to the field. By combining uh, the total stresses occurring in the pyramid is 4.65, which is higher than the modulus of rupture. Hence, here also the provided 160 mm is not sufficient. Hence, either we can increase the slab thickness or reduce the slab dimension uh, by changing the length and the slab. So now we can uh, discuss this in the Excel sheet, how to design it uh, for the case two in the Excel sheet. So here we have to change this case from one to two. Once you change this uh, case, here you can see this output parameter, which will be automatically uh, seen in the case to uh, tab. And here I have to change this number of commercial vehicle from 40 to 140. And if you see the trial thickness is uh, 0.16 meter, and the design is found to be unsafe because the total stress is 4.65, which is higher than the modulus of rupture. So this indicates that we have to change this uh, design parameter. Either I can design this with the uh, higher strength uh, concrete grade, such as five. You see the design will be safe. However, since the cost of uh, cement is very high, uh, we can go with the lower grade cement. Hence, I'm uh, fitting this previous M30 grade. But in this case, I'm just changing this thickness to 180. You can see whether it is safe or not. Yeah. So now for one uh, 80 mm thickness, that uh, design is found to be safe. So similarly, we have to do this alteration in designing the pavement to arrive at safe thickness. In case three, uh, so this is the example which is showing that at one, 180 mm, uh, the design is found to be safe, both manually also and in the Excel also. Now, moving on to this uh, case three, where the number of commercial vehicle is more than uh, 200. So in such cases, we have to design this pavement based on the fatigue damage. So here, the fatigue damage is based on expected repetition by allowable repetition. We already know this uh, growth factor is pi and design period is 20. Hence, we can use this uh, Excel sheet to directly arrive at this value. So now I'm going to the case three. So here I'm, I have to change this from case one to case three. And again, temperature zone will be one. And here I have to change from uh, from 140 to 200. If we use the same uh, thickness 0.16, the design is found to be unsafe. So once you change the case from uh, two to three, here you can see that uh, all these output values are coming in this zone. And here it is showing that uh, design is unsafe because the stresses are uh, due to the wheel load and temperature is higher. So here you can see that uh, stresses due to the wheel load is 3.93 and stresses due to the temperature uh, linearly is 1.04 and non-linear temperature differential 0.3. And by adding both uh, stresses, we got to know the final stresses acting on this lab. So in such cases, again, we have to vary the thickness of the pavement. Here I'm assuming to be 0 0.20. So here stresses value has reduced a little bit when compared to the previous one, again, which indicates that we have to further increase the thickness of the slab. I am changing to 0.23. And here you can see that uh, design of pavement is found to be safe. And by doing this uh, similar kind of alteration, we can determine this uh, ideal uh, thickness of the pavement. So till now we discussed about uh, design of pavement for conventional sub-base layers such as uh, WMM and uh, WBM. But I request all to try this uh, pavement design with alternate approach uh, such as by using uh, different sub-base types such as GSP and lime treated uh, sub base cement treated surface for the Kerala. And you can also vary the dimension from 2.5 to 4.5. And you can see how the stresses and temperature are varying. So until now, we know how to design the pavement. Uh, but uh, the most important uh, design step is coming here only. So now you know how to design the pavement. But uh, when you see this uh, concrete surface layer, we have different uh, choices. For example, the top surface can be a roller compacted concrete, 
or it can be a conventional screed compacted concrete, short panel concrete, interlocking, and self compacting concrete. So we have different choices for designing the surface layer. So the question is how to design this pavement, how to select this pavement. We already know how to design, but here we have to know how to select this pavement. Usually, the uh, this choice is based on the three different approach. One is life cycle cost analysis, and second one is the performance assessment, and third one is the sustainable analysis. Mostly, we are looking only this initial construction cost. We are not all looking at this total life cycle cost analysis, and in rare case, we are using the sustainable analysis. So now I am going to uh, demonstrate a simple comparative assessment between the total compacted concrete and conventional concrete. I assume all that you know very well about this conventional concrete. So I'm just giving a brief introduction to roller compacted concrete since it is a special type of concrete and it has been constructed only in the bigger uh, for a roller load application. So if you see this uh, basics of uh, roller compacted concrete, uh, the design philosophy is based on three different approach. The mixed design is based on geotechnical engineering approach where we develop a moisture density plot and the construction aspect is similar to the asphalt pavement wherein uh, RCSP mixes is transported to the site by using the dump track and it is uh, laid and laid by using this paver and compacted with a different set of uh, compaction rollers such as static and vibratory roll. The performance is usually assessed by using the conventional concrete permanent test press. If you see the characteristics of roller compacted, it's a zero slump and uh, the water content in the roller compact is very less when compared with the conventional concrete. Here it does not require any reinforcing and form up for the construction. And it can be able to achieve the comparable strength at a lower cement content in comparison with its counterparts. The initial cost of construction is around 10 to 50 percentage from the literature. And it can also found that uh, it can reduce the urban heat island, island effect significantly. So we, we carried out a laboratory uh, test test where we designed a two type of pavement, one with a roller compacted concrete, another one is a conventional concrete pavement. So the roller compacted concrete pavement performance is indicated with the black color, whereas uh, conventional is uh, denoted in red color. So two pavement is designed with the 400 kg of cement content. So here you can see that uh, the performance of roller compacted is well above this conventional concrete pavement. At three days, uh, roller compacted concrete pavement achieved around 70 to 80 percentage of strength, uh, which indicates that it has a greater potential for opening to early age traffic. So, in line with the comfort system, here also you can see that uh, fluxus strength of roller compacted concrete pavement is higher. So, here in this case, we varied the cement content from 200 to 400 for roller compacted. And for conventional concrete, it has been varied from th uh, 320 to 400. So, the, when you see the comparison of uh, fluxus strength, around 100 kg of cement current can be reduced in roller compactor to achieve the similar performance of conventional concrete. However, this is only based on the performance. So, to further uh, select this potential candidate for surface layer, we have to do this cost analysis and sustainable assessment. Again, based on the IRC SP62, uh, we designed this pavement by keeping all the material properties as the same and thickness is same. Uh, we are using same WM, GSP, and subgrade for the design. We are just changing this uh, surface property, such as roller compacted and conventional concrete pavement. By uh, with this pavement design, we found out this uh, safe pavement thickness. And we also determined this initial construction cost for both the pavement. And we found that uh, the use of RCCP can save this uh, initial construction cost and material uh, cost by 50 to 70 percentage because of the lower thickness of the pavement. Since the flexion is higher, uh, we can be able to achieve this uh, requisite property at, at a lesser thickness. If the thickness of the pavement is lesser, then the material construction will be lesser. And hence the cost, eventually the cost of the payment is also less. So till now we know that uh, cost of uh, payment of uh, total cost of RCCP is less than compared to this uh, conventional concrete thing. To further explore, we found, uh, we determined, the, uh, we performed a uh, sustainable assessment. So here you can see that uh, there are different stages in the sustainable assessment. 
starting from the material extraction, manufacturing, transportation, construction, and usage. Once uh, it has reached the end of life, we have to demolish, and again we are reconstructing. So, in this, in our approach, we consider from the material extraction to transportation, uh, owing to the positive data. When you do this uh, sustainable assessment, we found that the energy consumption of uh, RCCP is around nine to thirty percentage lower when compared with the conventional concrete treatment. The same uh, in case of uh, CO2 emission also, uh, JPCP has produced uh, 9 to 30 percentage higher CO2 emission in comparison with the roller compacted concrete rate. If you are more interested, you can uh, explore this analysis in the reference uh, given below. And with this, I am concluding my presentation. If you have any queries, I am happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Within the short span, you were able to convey great ideas. And uh, we were having more than 100 participants throughout the session. Thanks to all the participants for the patient listening. Now we'll have some discussion. To start with, I'll read out the questions given in the chat box. Okay. So the first question is, what is the requirement of minimum CBR? For uh, uh, rural road, it's 4%. Uh, again, uh, you are designing more than 450, it's 8%. Okay. The second question is, what is the purpose of providing a plastic sheet beneath the PQC layer? Yeah, actually, this is not coming under a rural road. So that is for rigid payment design. So here you can see for rigid payment uh, payment quality concrete. So we have this subways and above which we are providing a DLC and over which we are providing the PQC. The main purpose of providing this uh, PVC sheet is to reduce this friction and thereby we can uh, lower the payment. The main purpose is to reduce the friction between the PQC and PLC. Okay. The third question is how to treat construction joints in payments? How to, that is uh, repair and rehabilitation. So, sorry, I'll read the question once again. How to treat construction joints in payments? So, uh, again, uh, you can refer to IRC 58. So, they, uh, and IRC, if I'm not wrong, it's a 112. There, we are, they are given this uh, uh, remedy uh, for how to treat these joints for each different cases. The fourth question is how to find out the flexural strength of RCCP pavement in lab to be used in pavement design. So the flexural strength evaluation is similar to uh, conventional concrete pavement. Again, we have to cast uh, beams of 100 mm, 100 mm to 500. Again, we are subjecting to four point loading. So the total uh, testing procedure is similar to the conventional concrete. Okay, one last question: Can these low volume roads be used in housing sectors, colony with controlled access, like large group house housing society? Again, definitely we can use uh, for that. We have to uh, know this expected uh, vehicle composition and reload. So, based on that, we can use this uh, design accordingly. Okay. I think now the participants can unmute and ask the questions. Uh, sir, one more question. Uh, during construction, uh, temperature cracks are becoming a common occurrence in uh, most of the sites uh, due to high temperature and uh, due to the construction being carried out during the daytime, which is only possible uh, in case of rural roads in most spaces. So the question is one, uh, how to control that? And the second one is once that is occurred, uh, how to treat that? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, let me uh, present. Uh, Another one slide to answer your question.
yeah here is the reason so once we construct the payment we have to uh, provide this join cutting at appropriate time so initial cutting should be done uh, during the summer it should be in 4 to 8 hours and if it is a winter it should be uh, in 8 to 12 hours so once the initial cutting is done we have to widen this joint uh, for sealing it should be done around 14 to 16 days so after widening the joint we have to fill this uh, sealant after 28 21 days so this is the procedure we have to follow but most often uh, we are not following that's why you can see uh, the cracks are form, uh, forming randomly and another one important question uh, raised by you is the uh, yeah, duration of permanent uh, casting. So, yeah, here is an answer for that. So, if you see. Uh, the, the chemistry of uh, concrete pavement. So there will be a higher heat of hydration when you mix this uh, cement and it is followed by the dormant period. Again, it will uh, reach a peak state and it will be lesser. So while uh, laying this pavement, we have to assure that uh, this peak of uh, hydration from the cement and the surface temperature from the atmosphere should not lie in the same. So hence, we have to stagger our construction uh, by postponing to the evening or in the morning. So in such a way that we can avoid this uh, earlier uh, shrinkage cracks, especially the plastic shrinkage. Thank you, sir. If the participants have any more questions, you can question them. Ask them as well. Very nice presentation, Doctor. I am Inderjit Ghai from Chandigarh. You, you explained you, about the roller compacted concrete. What about the uh, traditional way of carrying out the concrete? Traditional, uh, meaning to say, field or in laboratory? In the in the field, we in the rural road, say we have ordinary mixers are there in which we, in which we are producing the concrete at site itself. And they are putting the normal shutters, steel plates, or wooden planks are there. So, what are your experience regarding that? Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, actually, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one minute, I'll just go back to the original presentation. So, the construction aspect is similar to the asphalt pavement. So, we can use this existing paver, drum track, and roller used for the asphalt pavement. So with this same uh, construction aspect, why can't we use this uh, existing asphalt paver and a drum track? We just have to transfer the mix to the side with the help of drum track, and it can be uh, laid into the paver and compacted with the conventional roller. We don't have to prefer especially for roller compacted. We can use this existing uh, material for asphalt paver. No, I mean to say in certain locations, it is not possible to have a paper and this concrete may uh, this uh, uh, roller compactors also can we prepare the concrete at site it's, uh, itself and vibrate it with a needle vibrator it's very difficult because it's a uh, zero slope concrete and it is like a dnc so with the vibrator we can't be able to achieve the desirable compaction so in roller compactor the strength is arriving mainly based on the compaction so it is necessary to ensure that uh, providing a 99 percentage of compaction. So, with the vibratory compactor, we can't be able to achieve the better density. Though it can be uh, mixed and transported to the site by conventional way, but I feel it should be compacted with the uh, rollers. Sir, in rural area. Yes, sir. In rural area, we, uh, we will uh, uh, require more width for the roller compactor and uh, paver, uh, cement concrete paver. But in uh, it is impossible uh, in the rural true. area. There is narrow width. I I am I am the executive engineer in Jaipur Development Authority. We are facing such so many problems in rural area to construct the CC road okay. because. The both way, the agricultural land and facing up the uh, bar barbed fencing, it is not possible 
uh, we, we are using this type of the machinery in the rural area. Only I am supporting the guys have. There is such a in such case we are uh, we cannot use the fixed form paper or uh, slip form paper in the rural areas. We cannot use the roller compactor in the rural area. Conventional method is the better than the option to compare the DLC and provide the PQC up to the last surface. Please see the see the problem of the rural area. These machinery cannot use in, in the rural area. But again, uh, if you want to use a, a roller combat concrete, we can go with the conventional procedure like uh, mixing and transporting to the site with manually. But again, the problem will be the use of rollers. Uh, to compact this type of concrete, we have to use a roller. There is no other option. Dr. Selvam, you <laughs> require, your requirement is M30 grade only. So if I can give you the M30 grade by using vibrator, needle vibrators or surface vibrator, why can't I use it in, 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 in this uh, payment construction in rural area? Sir, we have to uh, look at this durable property also. So uh, it's not only a good stand. The design payment should have a good fresh mechanical and durability property. So if uh, we are able to achieve this 99 percentage of uh, compaction, with any modes of compaction, it's fine. It's not like we have to use only roller compact, uh, only using roller. We can find other alternative measure also like soil plate compactor. So it's still uh, in the stage of development. So like we can go with the soil compactor, but again, we have to check in the field whether it is able to achieve or not. I do not know how many people are here from the uh, field, those who have actually done it. I have seen in most of the area using this uh, uh, local uh, system that is they mix the concrete or get the concrete from the RMC plant and they lay it and use needle vibrator or surface vibrator or in some cases they use this uh, tree tree mix tree, uh, tree mix system also sir. that is true that is for conventional concrete uh, for roller compactor this mechanism is also totally different so I'm not uh, asking you to use roller compactor I'm just giving an example like we have different set of options we can uh, choose this based on let's say cost analysis, performance assessment, sustainable analysis. Maybe you can use one more point like a consecutivity at the site. So based on this, you can choose this uh, best candidate for payment construction. Uh, sir, one more uh, question regarding the RCCP. And uh, what I understand is, uh, is uh, that you have given RCCP only as an alternate or as another, another option uh, compared to that PQC. Is it, is it, is it that? No, I just given one case study to show how to do this, how to select a potential candidate for payment design. Like I mentioned okay, okay. here, we have a lot of choices. We have to do, uh, we can compare the existing one and then we can finalize which one we can use for the site. Yeah, this for which a, uh, one such choice is RCCP, and uh, we normally do like as I said, uh, in a former uh, using needle and screed vibrators, we normally do. Uh, but what you have suggested is, if you go for RCCP, uh, the construction speed will increase, and also there will be cost saving, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, is uh, this joint cutting is uh, is in RCCP? This joint cutting is necessary, or it is constructed as a uh, or it is left as a continuous payment? So in some cases they are uh, left as a continuous payment, but most of the time they are doing the joint saving to avoid this early age crack. But the the spacing of the joints is more when compared with the continuous payment. Okay, okay, sir. then one more, uh, one last question. Um, in your uh, presentation, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, you have said that the percentage saving is uh, to the tune of around 50%, right? Yeah. Once an RCCP is uh, being constructed, but uh, how is it possible? Uh, because, uh, and what is uh, in, in the design sheet, what uh, essentially we can change is a flexural strength of concrete, uh, only the flexural strength of concrete. So, uh, what would be the range of flexural strength uh, that can be assigned to an RCCP payment in design uh, from a practical perspective? So, as I mentioned, uh, both the construction aspect is totally different. I have calculated this uh, cost uh, based on the material as well as the initial construction. 
like i consider uh, what type of equipment we need uh, how many labors we need and uh, here you see that this cost analysis is based on the thickness of the pavement so since the fluctuation is very high uh, in rccp for example uh, at 200 kg of cement uh, we are able to achieve 4.3 but same thing uh, we can't achieve at uh, even with the 320 kg of cement in conventional concrete so in the cost, the major portion is from cement. If you are able to reduce the cement, the cost will be reduced. And again, the material cost and the transportation cost also. Once the overall quantity uh, for the pavement is reduced, then I, eventually the total cost will be reduced. OK, OK. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sure. Sir, my one more question from my side, sir. sir in this, uh, in this concrete, uh, uh, can we use uh, this uh, cement with fly ash or it, it, it is only Portland cement? So you can use fly ash. That's an interesting question. We can use any kind of supplementary cementation material like uh, fly ash, GGBS. And we just have to uh, ensure that the strength requirement given in the project is achieved or not. We can use uh, any cementation material. Sir, good evening. This is Nishat from Andhra Pradesh. Sir, yes. you said for RCCP road, the CBR value of the subgrade soil is more than it should be 4 percent. Sir, where the sample to be collected, can you mention the depth at which sample to be collected on the road, sir? No, oh, actually, uh, I mentioned the minimum CBR value for the design is 4 percentage. Okay. So we assume that we are going to construct a pavement uh, with a 4 percentage CBR and GSP and WM. Okay, sir. Is it not necessary to check a free spelling index also uh, uh, for uh, assessing the characteristic of the subsoil, uh, subgrade soil, sir? Yes, sure. Actually, uh, like you pointed out, if you see the more they are given clearly the desirable uh, limit for uh, subgrade, which is plasticity index, liquid limit, free swelling index, and uh, C bearer value. So they are given this requirement in the more. Oh, so you mean to say that all these four parameters we have to check it before laying the road. Okay, sir. Thank you very yes. much, sir. Yes. So we have some more questions in the chat box. I'll read out. The first question is, uh, how to design CC, CCP when there is a already, already 15 to 20 years old CC payment, which is already damaged? Okay, that's an interesting question. So again, I will go back. I have some slides for that. So here is an example that you can see there is a pavement which is distressed 30 years below uh, before. Now we have to know whether we have to remove this pavement or, uh, and construct a new pavement or we can use this existing pavement as a base uh, course or not. Uh, for that, we have to do this uh, structural capacity test by using the falling weight deflotometer and by using the uh, core analysis. So here you can see that we have taken one core and we have to do this uh, FWT test to know this uh, strength properties of uh, subbase, subgrade, and uh, uh, top surface layer. So, based on this, we can uh, design what type of uh, uh, suggestion we can give. If it is good, we can use as a, if the bottom layer is good, we can use as a uh, just bonded. If it is not, we can use as an unbonded and we can assume this existing surface as a uh, base layer. Okay, next question is how to treat the defect scaling in CC payment surface? So, uh, that's an interesting question, uh, but again, it will take another one lecture to show how to do remedies. So, but uh, as of now, I can show some of the remedies. Uh, So from the slides, you can see that uh, the most uh, widely used repair technique for CC are crack sealing, slab replacement, double bar retrofitting, crack stitching, diamond rending, and diamond proofing. Again, it's depend upon the type of failures. So for each case, uh, IIC has given these guidelines. So. So here Hello. is that. Uh, yeah, Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, mainly the construction 
the strength of the cc road depends upon the carrying end and all these things but in general rural area we construct single lane road where traffic cannot be stopped yeah correct so um, the failure of the these roads are uh, mainly due to traffic the carrying okay. period we cannot get sufficient carrying period so what is remedy for that so remedy uh, again if you see the strength development uh, it's achieving slowly when compared to the conventional concrete. so this is a conventional concrete here you can see that at least we have to provide this curing for seven days or yeah, we can cover this top surface with some curing compounds <clears throat> we cannot we cannot generally we construct single lane road and we, it is not possible to cure for seven days I agree with you. Uh, we don't want to go with the conventional curing of uh, pond curing, but we can spray some curing compounds uh, to to have sufficient uh, curing. Okay, sir. We have some more questions in the chat box. Since we are running short of time, I'll quickly read that. Next question is, sir, can you give some details about the performance of RCCP? in saline or seashore areas uh, so we haven't uh, done any test in uh, seashore area so i can't comment on that but uh, anyway i'll consider for future like uh, we can study how it will be there when it's subjected to this kind of situation okay next question is sir, is that mixed design of roller compacted concrete is different from conventional concrete if so what will be the difference uh, uh, for conventional concrete uh, we are going with this uh, assumption of cement content aggregate to cement ratio then inclusion of sp but here uh, for roller compacted we have to we have to develop a moisture density curve like it's similar to conventional uh, soil mix design we have to add water content to the prime materials and we'll measure the density and we plot a graph between the maximum dry density and the moisture content and you have to select this water content at which the maximum density is achieved. So this is a typical way of designing the solar compacted concrete. Okay, next question is, sir, what will be the maximum thickness of RCCP we can construct in a single operation? The code suggests that we can go up to with a 250 to 200 mm thickness. Okay. So there are many requests for using bamboo in place of steel as the enforcement. Request for research of using bamboo in RCCP and some IRC codes for bamboo cement concrete in future. Maybe you can throw your rights on that. As I already suggested in the given slide, as I told, there is no formal and reinforcing steel bond for roller compactor. So we don't have to worry about that. But uh, for conventional concrete, uh, I haven't uh, come across this kind of uh, use of bamboo as a reinforcement. So again, uh, I can't comment on that. Okay, next question is how, sir, how can improve undulated surface after construction of concrete payment? Uh, can you repeat, sir? Sir, if the, after construction, if there is an undulation, how can we treat that? So, for that also, I mentioned uh, uh, we have a different rehabilitation techniques. So, based on the type of distress only, we can uh, suggest this remedy. So, there are a lot of remedy. Uh, here you can see that. Okay, one well, last question is, uh, please suggest what should be the position of CC beam for flexural strength test? Is it perpendicular to the casting or parallel? It should be perpendicular to the casting direction. Okay, okay. So I think I have read out all the questions in the chat box. Since we are running short of time, we can have one or two questions for the participants. Participants can unmute and ask the questions. Okay, I believe there are no more questions. If there's doctor, any doctor, I disagree with you regarding that. If we use the curing compound, we can fly the traffic next day or after two oh, three days. Right? I'll take. Hello, sir. Yeah. Doctor, I disagree with your version that by applying curing compound, we can fly the traffic in two or three days. I didn't say that we can fly. 
that is one of the remedy i mentioned as i mentioned already uh, we have to provide this uh, curing at least for seven days so if in the rare case so i suggest this is one kind of thing but again we have to try out with the both laboratory and in the field before implementing that okay i believe all the queries are over okay if you have any further questions you can directly mail that to dr selvam uh, thank you once again dr selvam for the wonderful presentation and all the participants for the patient lesson thank you all Thank you.